The entrance hymn is Enter the Journey. This hymn, as well as all the hymns, can be found in the booklet. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. It's great to be here to celebrate your confirmation, a day of great blessing and grace for you and your parents and your sponsors. I offer this Mass for you, for all of us who gather here today, carrying in our hearts our own intentions and our prayers. My sisters and brothers, as we come together to celebrate the Father's love, let us call to mind our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priest of the Lord, ministers of our God you shall be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among nations and their offspring among peoples. All who will see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed, the word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On that day, there broke out a severe persecution of the church in Jerusalem, and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, except the Apostles. Those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. When the Apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord.
Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the, and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Turning to the disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I say to you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Candidates for confirmation remain standing. Everyone else, please, please be seated. Your Excellency, Archbishop Perez, the parish of St. Bede the Venerable is honored by the presence of a successor of the apostles. I present to you our sons and daughters who are candidates for the sacrament of confirmation. Under the guidance of their parents, guardians, catechists, and sponsors, and with the prayerful support and encouragement of this parish community, they have prepared for this sacrament of Christian initiation, which was begun at their baptism. I ask that you impose hands upon them and anoint them with the sacred chrism, sealing them with the gift of the Holy Spirit. We pray that their participation in the Holy Eucharist with all of us assembled here today will strengthen them as faithful witnesses of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Monsignor, and give them a round of applause. Congratulations. Please be seated. So, Monsignor, you mentioned that this journey of yours began at baptism and continues strengthened, confirmed this day as you are confirmed. So let me first ask all of you a question. How many know the day of your birthday? Raise your hand. Oh, come on. Everybody down there doesn't know the day of their birthday? Let me, let's try this again. I'll say it in Chinese now. How many of you know the day of your birthday? Raise your hand. All right. Now we're going to have a little, a little uh, contest. I'm going to first ask this side, and then I'm going to ask this side. And we'll see which side wins, okay? How many sitting on this side know the day you were baptized? One, two, three. Don't tell me if the priest back there know. They must know the day of their baptism. If not, raise your hand, Monsignor. Just lie. 
One, two, three. So three. How many on this side know the day you were baptized? One? Who won? They did, right? So I'm going to give everybody a little bit of homework tonight for the next two weeks. I'll give you two weeks. Go and find out the day you were baptized. I was baptized August 21st of 1995. Do the math quick. <laughs> of 1961 in Corpus Christi, Miami, Florida. So go find out the day you were baptized. I'll give you Monsignor's cell phone and you can call him for the next two weeks. He doesn't care that it's Holy Week. Find out the most important day of your life. I'm going to repeat that. The most important day of your life. And, and you might look at me and you might say, oh, really? You will one day know that it was the most important day of your life. That day is deepened today as you are confirmed. So I'm supposed to ask questions from you. Did they tell you that? Yeah? All right? So I'm going to do whatever you ask me to do, right? So I'm going to ask you a question. Do you want me to ask questions or not? I'll do whatever. What's your name? Tessa, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. You want me to ask questions, yes or no? No? <laughs> At round one this morning, there was a girl that actually said yes. So since Tessa said not to ask the Confirmandi questions, her and her classmates, I'm not going to ask them questions. But I'm going to ask the questions of the sponsors, though. How about that? That's a little different. So I'm going to ask the confirmandi to volunteer their sponsor. I'll bring the sponsor to the front. I'll ask them questions. What's your sponsor's name? Um, Marge. So I'll ask if you pick, if you volunteer her, she'll come up front and I'll ask her. And I'm not. I'm not joking. Uh, and if she gets the questions right, you get confirmed today. If she doesn't, then there's always next year, all right? So who wants to volunteer their sponsor? Don't say that. I heard that. Who wants to volunteer the sponsor? Come on, I don't have all day. What's her name? Skylar, you want to come up? No? No, thank you. I'm not going to ask you questions. I am going to ask questions, though, uh, a question that I want the sponsors to actually ask these young folks that have chosen you to stand by their side uh, at a very sacred and singular moment that doesn't get repeated. It'll never happen again. You know, there's about 8 billion people on the planet. Sometimes we think we're the only one, right? And we act like that. But we're not. We're just one of a 8 billion critters like us roaming around all over the planet. And out of this 8 billion people, what's your name? Alex, you chose, what's your name? Brad. Brad. He could have chosen any one of 8 billion people, but he chose you. So I'm going to ask the sponsors that by the end of this day, privately, ask them why they chose you. Why did they pick you? What did they see in you? What did they hope to see in you? So at least you know what they thought and, and you won't let them down. So talk to them. See, I don't know what they see in you, actually. I have no clue, right? But they do. So by the end of this day, privately ask them why they, you were standing next to them at this sacred, sacred moment. I'm going to share with you uh, just a few words. One word that's very central to the Christian heart. Words from Pope Francis. And then finally, some, a thought from me. The first word I want to share with you and reflect together with you is gratitude. Gratitude. 
lies at the, at the center of the Christian heart because everything that you and I have, and when I say everything, I mean everything. I mean that there is nothing. There is nothing that you and I possess that isn't the fruit of a gift. Though we call lots of things our things, and we live in like an illusion, right? I grew up in a little row home in North Jersey, right across the river from Manhattan. And I called that house my house. Do you call your house your house? Yeah, right? Do you pay for it? Then why do you call it your house? <laughs> you live there, right? So I called, I called my house my house. When I got older, I realized that it wasn't really my house, as he just realized, right? <laughs> that it wasn't really my house. Then whose house was it? Well, I thought, well, it's my parents, because they used to call it their house too. But you know what? That wasn't true either. It wasn't their house. That was an illusion too. My house was owned by First Union, which became Wells Fargo. But I grew up thinking it was my house. Everything that we have is really a gift. You and I began our existence in mommy's womb as the fruit of a gift. 23 chromosomes from mommy, 23 chromosomes from daddy, God's created, boop, touch, and there you and I happened. And you know what? We had nothing to do with it. Not only did we have nothing to do with it, it came not, as a time, not at a time of our choosing. We had, they weren't, we weren't consulted. It didn't happen at the time of our choosing. And there will come a time for all of us that life as we understand it here on this planet is also coming, going to come to a close. And the Lord's going to call us home. And we're not going to get consulted on that either. It's going to come at a time of, not at a time of our choosing. So everything that we have is a gift. So be grateful for what you have and use it well. One of the greatest gifts that you have are actually your parents. Now they do lots of things for you. You see it, right? You see it every day. Um, they put a roof over your head that's not really theirs, not yours either. It's a gift and you have it for a while. Um, they feed you, they clothe you. They made sure you get educated. Those are the things that you see. But what I'm about to tell you, you will hear, but you will not understand. Totally. You will, but not right now. Maybe in about 20 years you will, when you're like 34, and it's a year 2042. Far away, right? 2042, imagine. 2042. And now it's 2042, and some of you are married and have kids. And you make choices like your parents have made for you that have been tough, and you do it out of love. But you don't tell your kids because you don't want them to feel bad. Well, that happened with your parents too. They make life, they've made choices for you and decisions that have been tough, a tough moment. But you'll never know. They'll never tell you because they don't want you to feel bad. Some of those moments for them right now are actually flashing in front of them. They know, right parents? You know. You know. Some of them are sitting there looking at me saying, huh, if he only knew. If he only knew. But you will understand in 2042 when you are having one of those days and that night you put your head on your pillow and you close your eyes and you're going to say, wow, what a day, Lord. Choices and things that I had to do out of love because love is always sacrificial. And then you're going to remember and you're going to say to yourself that night, you know, now I understand. I understand what that guy back in 2022 was talking about. 
Now I understand. So let's ask your moms and dads to please stand and give them a round of applause for all that they do for you, especially the things that are unseen. Moms and dads, where are you? The next group of words that I want to share with you come from Pope Francis. A couple of years ago, he spoke these words about confirmation. And I'd like to share them with you and allow the, his words to speak to your heart. This is what he said. Confirmation, like every sacrament, is not the work of men but of God, who cares for our lives in such a manner as to mold us in the image of his Son to make us capable of loving like him. He does it by infusing in us his Holy Spirit, whose action pervades the whole person and his entire life. When we welcome the Holy Spirit into our heart, he says, and allow him to act, Christ makes himself present in us and takes shape in our lives. Through us it will be he, Christ himself, who prays, forgives, gives hope and consolation, serves others, draws close to the needy and to the least, creates community and sows peace. Think how important this is. By means of the Holy Spirit, Christ comes to do all this among us and for us. And that is why it is important that young people receive the sacrament of confirmation. And that's why you're here today. You really are so, so blessed. So blessed. The last words I want to share with you are my words. So I was ordained a bishop in July, it'll be 10 years. And the night before I had my first confirmations as a bishop, I went to chapel to pray and ask the Lord, well, what do you want me to tell these young people uh, for the next like uh, 25 years of my life uh, about that moment? And I prayed and thought. And so I came up with a thought that I'd like to place in your mind and heart today. You actually today become part of a very exclusive club. I'm the only bishop in the country that actually does this, that has this thought. And if you hear of one, tell me because I'll sue him. I'm going to place this thought in your heart and mind, and you're going to join literally now thousands of young people thus far that walk around the country now with this thought in their mind and heart. These young people now span five states, New York, Ohio, Florida, Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Some of them are now in their 20s and they're roaming around with this thought in their heart. I'm going to ask you to remember this thought and to never forget. Never, ever, ever. Especially in difficult moments, in challenging moments, and, and know that they will come. They will come. So I'm going to ask you to never forget this thing so that when you and I encounter each other about 20 years from now, and you're like 24 and I'm 40, uh, then you will say to me, you confirmed me 20 years ago. And I'm going to say, what's your name, honey? I'm going to say, Megan, I probably did. And I'm, then I'm going to say, Megan, and I've done this many times already, I'm going to say, Megan, what did I ask you to remember that day and never, ever forget? And Megan, it would be in your best interest to remember that day. <laughs> All right? So never forget this thought. Put it in your heart and mind, engrave it there, and leave it there. And pray about it. So I'm going to repeat it twice. 
And then I'm going to ask you to repeat it with me, along with everybody else, because you know it applies to them too. You know, you've disrupted their Saturday afternoon. Do you know that? Because of your confirmation? Because whatever they had planned to do regularly on Saturday afternoons, they're not doing it today. They're here in this sacred time and sacred place. And God's going to touch them too. Because he knows what's in their hearts and what's roaming around in their lives. And he's going to listen to them as well. So listen to this thought. I'm going to repeat it twice. And then you repeat it with me. Never, never, never. Never. When? Ugh, that wasn't so great. When? Never. Never underestimate the power of the Spirit of God working in you, through you, and despite you. Never underestimate the power of the Spirit of God working in you, through you, and despite you. Repeat it once with me. Never underestimate the power of the Spirit of God working in you, through you, and despite you. And honestly, most of the time, unbeknownst to you, you don't even know that it's happening. The only thing that God asks of you and me is that we give as a gift what we have received as a gift. The day of your baptism, your parents did exactly that, actually. They gave you as a gift what they had received as a gift. And they bought you to church for baptism. Grateful that you had showed up on the scene, on the planet. They wanted you to receive the gift of faith. They wanted you to come to know Jesus Christ, to follow him, to love him. They wanted to introduce you to the shepherd, the way, the truth, and the life. And that day, they made promises in your name because you were way too young to make them on your own. And they've been faithful to those promises. Because if they hadn't been faithful to those promises, you wouldn't be here today and neither would, would they. You would be someplace else, but it would not be here. But today, moments now before you are confirmed, the church is going to ask that you renew those baptismal promises. That now you make them for yourself and then you choose them as your own. So I'm going to ask our confirmation candidates to please stand to renew their baptismal promises in final preparation to receive this awesome sacrament of confirmation. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, a communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. And so I'm going to ask now that those to be confirmed bow your heads and close your eyes as the church prays that you be sealed with the gift of the Spirit. O 
Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Having renewed your baptismal promises, you are now ready to be confirmed. And so I call you to come forth along with your sponsor and bearing the name of your patron saint. Mary, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Mary. Patrick, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Patrick. Amen. Catherine? Catherine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Catherine. Amen. Peace. Peel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Peel. Hope be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. Anthony, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Valentine. Valentine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Valentine. Amen. Agatha, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Agatha. Sebastian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Sebastian. Mary Grace, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Mary Grace. Issachar. Issachar, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Issachar. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Sebastian. Bridget, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Bridget. Amen. Apollo, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Send us your Spirit, Spirit. O oh Lord. Francis, be Joseph, 
be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hold Peace be with us you. with the seal, O Lord. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Sorrow has spoken, has broken. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Teach us your wisdom, O Lord. Shadows have clouded and have clouded our sight. Give us hearts that see. Set our loving free. Hear us and help us. Let us ask our newly confirmed young men and women to please stand and give them a round of applause. Congratulations. And we all stand to continue to pray for them and their parents and sponsors, for the needs of our own hearts and the needs of the world. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God, the Almighty Father, to be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from the Holy Spirit, are one. Our response is, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For these, his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by the way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the Holy Church of God, together with Francis our Pope, Nelson our Bishop, and all the bishops, that gather by the Holy Spirit, the church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. For the whole world, that all people who have one maker and father may acknowledge one, not, one another as brothers and sisters without discrimination of race or nation and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For the people of Ukraine, for peace in Ukraine, please join me in praying to our Blessed Mother as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Mary, Queen of Peace, pray for us. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles, and will that through them and their successors the same spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful. Listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good all the soul of church. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants and grant that being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also, Lord, your servants, whom you have been pleased to confirm today by bestowing the Holy Spirit, and keep them in your grace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity, foster her growth in the world through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Let me just say something about Deacon Ryan. So Deacon Ryan, I have the honor and blessing and the privilege of ordaining him a priest in about five weeks. So pray for him for the next few weeks as he uh, prepares uh, for a title change and a role change. Congratulations. Thank you, Archbishop. Before we conclude this beautiful celebration of confirmation, I want to take an opportunity to personally congratulate our newly confirmed young people of St. Bede Parish. In his homily today, Archbishop Press certainly explained the, the meaning of this sacrament and what that sacrament calls each of you to live filled now and empowered as you are with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I also want to thank your, your parents, your sponsors, your family members, uh, our Director of Religious Education, Mr. Sean Tobin, his assistant, Mrs. Landra Cunningham, our catechist, Karen Altomare, Tom Bresnahan, Patricia Lutz, Mark Millivoy, Diane Reese, and Alicia Rogers, who help prepare our students and who I know will continue to be their guide and inspiration as they proceed on their journey of life as a disciple of Jesus Christ. I also want to thank everyone who helped to make this Mass, this liturgy, so beautiful, especially Father O'Donnell, who acted as our Master of Ceremonies, along with his uh, very fine ceremony crew of servers, uh, our musicians, and our scola, led by Mrs. Susan DeFlorio. Finally, and most importantly, we all thank you, Archbishop Perez, Archbishop of Philadelphia, for coming here to St. Bede Church to honor this occasion and administer this Sacrament of Confirmation. And to more fittingly thank you, Archbishop, I call upon two members of the confirmation class, Aidan Mullen and Nora Mahoney, to come forward. Your Excellency Archbishop Perez, my name is Ada Mullen and this is Nora Mahoney. On behalf of the confirmation class of St. Bede, the Venerable Parish, I would like to thank you for coming to confirm us today. We've been preparing for this day in many ways, such as doing acts of service, studying about confirmation, and saying extra prayers for you in your creed. Today we become full members of the church and we are very excited. As a token of our gratitude, we would like to present you with this spiritual bouquet. Thank you, Norma. God bless you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for bringing us closer to Christ and making us fully initiated Catholics. Give them a round of applause. Congratulations. <laughs> we also want to thank your pastor, Monsignor Marine. How, how many years ordained are you this year? 47 years of priesthood. Give him a round of applause. Again, congratulations to our newly confirmed young men and women. Can you smell the chrism? I really hope you like it. It takes about a week. Be assured of my prayers for you as I rely on your prayers for me. The Lord be with you. Confirm, O God, what you have brought about in us and preserve in the hearts of your faithful the gifts of the Holy Spirit. May they never be ashamed to confess Christ crucified before the world and by devoted charity may they ever fulfill his commands who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.